This verse here does not give you a shahada. It does not command you to say a shahada. It says believe. I'm happy to accept that, but that's different from giving shahada. Shahada is testimony, not belief. But you don't have a single verse that mentions the, uh, the word God with all reference to all three at the same time. What you're doing here is you're asking me to accept a defense that you won't allow me to employ. The fundamental point of the criticism, this shahada is a later innovation. Where does Allah command you to, to testify in this form is the point. To believe in Allah is also to believe in his books, to believe in the angels in the afterlife. But by that logic, you could just say to believe in Allah is to believe in his prophet. Yeah. So you don't need the second comment, do you? The Rasul. I mean, to come with better arguments show me shahada in the Quran. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, if you're, if you're condemning my line of logic, is you've just condemned all of the Muslims that use that logic. That's why we're having this radicalism. And this Christian died. How is your tea, Dust? It's running away, Bob. How is your tea? Was it all right? Is it running away? Where is Shamsi? How are you, Joseph? Long time no see. Long time no see. Hey. I would like I would like to have a conversation with you if you're free. I'm, I'm doing you I'm not doing religion today, that's all right. Okay, what we're talking their about. Mind. Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine. fair enough. You are a radical Christian fanatic dad. Thanks, Peter God. You are exactly, exactly like that. Like you behave exactly like a Muslim. No freedom. Okay. I am secular human being. I don't have any Nassim. religion. Thank you. Nassim, how are we doing? Thanks. You all right, sir? Cool. Good to no see you. For me. I don't want um, to have any Nassim, I, I have a question for you. Why? Okay. Because yeah. I want to be a good human please, being. Please, Thank you very much. Please, please. Nassim, so, so very simply, Muslims, Muslims have often come up to Christians in this park and they state things like, you know, show me where Jesus said, I am God. Okay. Very simple statements. Yeah. And then they justify the question by saying that this is basic Christianity. Okay? So in that in that in that logic, in that vein, can you show me in the Quran where Allah describes to you what is the, the content of the Shahada, where Allah says in the Quran that the Shahada is this formula? Could you show me that? So Shahada is to testify that there's no God yeah. besides Allah. Yeah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's correct. That is exactly what Shahada is. This is said in many, many different ways, including in, in those words, but also indirectly. Uh, yeah. Indirectly so, so my question is, where does Allah say that this is the Shahada? Where does Allah say that so to, to, be a, to be a Muslim, you have to say this formula? And I don't, I'm not again, I, I'm not asking okay. for exact words. I'll even accept words to that effect. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be distracted by the, the hecklers. Um, I mean, the, the, the Quran says to believe in Allah. Yes. Um, and to believe in his messenger. Yes. Um, and there's a verse in the Quran that says that Allah... But it also says to believe in angels. Yeah. It also says to believe in the other books. It also says to believe in the Day of Judgment. It also says... Um, to believe in a number of other things. I can't remember all six points now. So, right, yeah. So my point to you is, if your logic is, well, Allah says to believe in these things, well, why isn't the Shahada, I testify that there's only one God, Muhammad is his prophet, I believe in his angels, I believe in his books, I believe in the day of judgment, and the, the other things that are stated. Do you have my point? In the second chapter says, oh, you who believe, yep. believe in Allah. And yes, his message yes, and yes. His but the Shahada is a very technical there is a statement, verse in the isn't Quran it? that says that God bears witness and the word Shahada is used. Yeah. Or that there's no God besides him. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't then say in the same sentence, doesn't it? Does it say that in the same sentence? Not in the same verse. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? But elsewhere it says. So, so, so my, point to, my point is this, Nisim. N am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, yeah, right. Is yeah. it Nisim or Nasim? Nasam. 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 Yeah, or Nas is fine. Nas. Nas. I'm really rubbish with names. It's nothing personal. Me too. So my point is that 
Um, that the shahad is a very technical thing. It's a very clear statement. If I go into a mosque... I guess the Constantinople, yeah. Nicene Creed... Yeah, exactly, well exactly. So if I go into a mosque and I say, I want to say the shahada, I want to say that there's only one God, that Allah is the one and only God, and Ahmed is the prophet of God, that's not a shahada that would be accepted in a mosque. I would have to say Muhammad. Ahmed is another name for Muhammad. But, but do, can you show me which jurist says that I can say Ahmed? Uh, you don't need like Jews. It's in the Quran, in Surah 61 verse 6. Okay, so, so, the, so we're saying that there's... Now, are you saying, Nazam, that there's two types of shahada? One where you say Muhammad and one where you say Ahmed? Well, there's more than one way to say the shahada. So there's lots of ways to say the shahada. But it all amounts to the same thing. So right. whether I testify that Ahmed is a prophet. Okay, so, so, so but my point to you is that you've got this very clear understanding in your mind that the shahada has these two claims to make, these two testimonies to make. Yeah, as long as it doesn't contradict yeah. the Quran. But, but yeah, so it doesn't contradict the Quran. But the point is, I can't see anywhere in the Quran where Allah defines the Shahada, where Allah says, this is the Shahada. And yes, you're right, the Quran says that there's only one God, and the Quran says Muhammad is the prophet of God. But it, the Quran also says that you have to believe in his books, you have to believe in his angels, you have to believe in the Day of Judgment. Am I missing? There's the sixth one, isn't there? I'm missing the, the final day one. Day of Judgment, last day, and I think to believe in like a form of predestination and a form of predestination yeah, like okay so so the reality is what what it seems to me is that later muslims through the hadiths are th creating something that the quran has not asked you to do well the quran has never asked you to combine your testimony and belief in that muhammad is the prophet of allah with your belief in allah himself it's, it's like as a, a shahada sum, summary of the message of the Quran. But the point is, the uh, message of the Quran is to believe in Allah and to believe in the Prophet, and, and to believe in His books, and to believe in the Day of Judgment, that, yeah. and to believe in a, a form of predestination. To, to believe in Allah is also to believe in His books, to believe in the angels and the afterlife. But by that logic, you could just say to believe in Allah is to believe in His Prophet. Yeah. So you don't need the second comment, do you, the Rasul? Not necessarily. I mean, if, if you say I believe in Allah and that implies that you also believe, like if I said I believe in Allah in this conversation yeah. and I never said that I believe in Muhammad, uh, it doesn't mean that I don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad, like it strongly implies that as a Muslim. Yeah, so, so this is my point. What, what we've got is a very arbitrary, later redaction of, of the Shahada. So in other words, later Muslims have invented what I the Shahada is. is. What the fathers were doing of Christianity in that they were making it easy for the lay people, like giving like a, a bridge or summary of yeah. the message of the Bible. Okay. And with the Shahada, it's like a summary. Of but but there is a fundamental difference, though, isn't there? And the fundamental difference is that Christ says that another advocate will come that will guide the church into all truth. So implicit within uh, Christian theology is the understanding that there will be continued development of the truth of Christ. But by contrast, the Quran says that on this day I have perfected your religion for you and given to you the religion of Islam. Which means that there was a day at some point in the past when Islam was complete, and there was no That's need to add to it. Because the, the, the church fathers are saying that Jesus, the Trinity is in the Bible and they're just simply making it easy for lay people to understand. They're not developing something new in their understanding. In their understanding, they're, they're exegeting the Bible and making it easy. And similarly, like the uh, exegetes of the Quran, you know, they, they gave the, the Shahada, even though the Shahada is expressed, it both as uh, testified that there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. It's actually in the Quran, but it's not. If you're looking for the set in one verse, and yeah, you wouldn't find it. So, so, but, uh, so, so this this advances my criticism, because the the ecumenical council, new, the, the ecumenical councils, and and to be clear, I'm not saying that it's something new. So that we we're on the same page, I accept that the Quran teaches that there's only one God, and that Muhammad is his prophet. I'm not even disputing that. 
right? My point to you is, um, when, 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 one second, my point to you is that the Quran also says you need to believe in Allah's books, you need to believe in the day of judgment, you need to believe in a form of predestination. And therefore, why does the Shahada stop arbitrarily with Allah and Muhammad? The reason being that the, the fundamental point of the criticism is that this is a later innovation. This Shahada is a later innovation. Where does, where does Allah command you to, to testify in this form is the point. Because if he hasn't commanded you, why are you doing it? It does, it does say to believe in Allah and to believe in yes. the messenger. Yes, but where does so he command you? This is you? just another way of um, to, uh, to believe in Allah and his messenger. But, says but he says many things. Allah. He says get circumcised. He says, I, 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 sorry, okay, so maybe this is an example connected to the Hadith. More a tradition, yeah. yeah. So, so it, 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 we can move the same logic onto the, the, the five. But the Muslim criticism is that the Bible does contradict um, the doctrine of the Trinity. Well, no, I mean, the, 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 the criticism that, that Muslims make against the Bible is based upon their non reading of the Bible. Because if they had actually spent any time reading the Bible, they would see clearly that Christ is literally called God. Thomas literally calls Christ God. Paul literally calls Christ God. Jesus himself literally states, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. According to the whole Testament, Nazim, and I know you know this well enough, who's the Lord of the Sabbath in the Old Testament? Well, man was made for the Sabbath, but no, that, the Sabbath that, no, no. was made for... Who, who is the Lord of the man. Sabbath? Who's the Lord of the Sabbath, according to the Old Testament? I don't know any verse that says... It's in Deuteronomy, and this is the point, okay. Nazim, is that Muslims haven't read the Bible. They're making statements about the Bible that they haven't read. Because if you... Had, no, one second. If you had read the Bible at all, you would know that the Old Testament is very clear. The Lord of the Sabbath is Yahweh. So if Jesus is saying that I am the Lord of the Sabbath, that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, he's saying that the Son of Man is Yahweh. And the Son of Man is the favorite phrase that Jesus uses to refer to himself. But, but Son of Man just simply means man, a human. No, it means, um, it means, it means one in the form of man. Well, it means, the, the word is that banash, yeah. which means son of yeah. man, yeah. Uh, which is another way of saying human yeah. or, or man. Yeah. Just like the English word man at yeah. one time referred to humanity. Yeah. So son of man doesn't necessarily refer to a specific individual. And what's interesting is that if you translate that back into Aramaic, uh, it's the same word, son of man, for man. So when it says um, Banash wasn't made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for Banash, therefore Banash is Lord of the Sabbath, you have that ambiguity in Aramaic. But in the English, when it's translated, they make that distinction between like man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made therefore son of man. But in Aramaic, it uses the same expression. Well, the, 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 there's lots of fundamental problems with that. First. Firstly, the Gospels were written in Greek. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, the, 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 so, secondly no, 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 the, the, there's lots of problems with this. Back translating it into Aramaic is to ignore Morris that. Is, uh, uh, back, uh, back, translating it, Casey, back translating it into Arabic, Aramaic, is not dealing with the text that we have. The text that we have is saying that, so that you might know that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, and then he heals. And the then, but, 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 point, so, Nazam, but the point is, the point is that the Muslims are making statements about the Bible that they haven't studied, as you've demonstrated. You've demonstrated you did not know in the Old Testament that Yahweh is called the Lord of the Sabbath because he says, this is my day. This, this day belongs to me. So now, and you, and you didn't know that. So where does so it say that? It, it, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get off the topic. So the point is, when we when when we are challenging Muslims mm -hmm. like you to show me where the Quran states in clear terms what the Shahada is, we're simply holding Muslims to the logic that they're applying to us. And I'm being more generous because a Muslim will come up to a Christian and go, show me where Jesus said, I am God. In these words, I am God. I'm sure you've heard that argument before. Yeah. You might have even used it yourself in your early days. Yeah. But the, the reality is here we are flipping your logic on you and you're failing by your own logic because you can't show me where Allah says, 
this is the form of the Shahada. You can't show me where Allah says pray five times a day. Can you show me a verse in the Quran where Allah says pray five times a day? With the, from, you can exegete from the Quran the times of the prayers where it mentions, uh, which indicates that the five uh, daily prayers. The Shia don't see it that way. Also from the living tradition. Shias do pray five times, but they but in combine, three sets. Yeah. But, but they do still pay Fajr, Zohar, Asim. Right, but, but, but it, it, so, so clearly the Shias who have competent people in Arabic as well. This is more to do with no. Jewish pundits. One second, one second. So, so the, the, the reality is that the, the Quran does not command you to pray at five separate times. It, it, prays it, you to, it commands you to pray five times, not at five separate that? times. Uh, so, 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 so both Sunnis and Shias do pray uh, f five times. No, uh, no but, but they combine. There's, but there's difference with regards to the uh, the the timing. Do the Shia combine into three prayers? Um, they, they combine the uh, the Zohar and Asr and the Isha and Maghrib together. So how many time? How many separate times does a Shia pray? Uh, five, five. No, no, no. Oh, do, do you mean in in terms of in terms of like times in the day? Do they pray? Th they, they, they pray the five, but they combine them. Like right, so that's three. That, that but even in the Sunni sport, um, even the Sunni as a traveler uh, can combine as well. Right. So, uh, but, but the Sunni restricted just for traveling, whereas the Shia. So this is about jurisprudence. Well. Yeah. And 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 this is the point is that if you got a better. Yeah. Class, so so, the, so this is the point that within Islam, at the very heart of Islam, there is bidah. Islam that you practice well, is the Islam, the Islam, the Islam, the, the Islam that the Islam that you not practice. All innovation is bad. But the Islam that you practice was invented after the time of Muhammad. Which Islam? The, the Islam you're practicing like was invented after the time Islam, of Muhammad. Islam, then I would agree. Then yeah, ISIS Islam, or yeah. Taliban Islam, then yeah, I would agree that was invented after the Prophet. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying your Islam was invented after the time of Prophet. So the Islam I believe in is the Islam of the Prophet I, 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 I argue differently because the Muslims at the time of Muhammad, there's no, the, the, the Muslims at the time of Muhammad, the, the text, the only text that we have that has any claim to the 7th century is the Quran. Not the Hadiths, the Hadiths come hundreds of years later. The text that we can pinpoint to the 7th century is the Quran. Okay? And even that is arguable. You mean like being in generous. terms of document? We've got, we've got some pamphlet sets of the Quran that we can date close to the 7th century. Well, like those found in Birmingham. Like those found in Birmingham. If not 100% according to you. Um, but so where in that text does Allah say, where in that text does Allah give the injunction for the Shahada? Praying five times a day as you practice it. The Shahada is in the Quran. Where? Um, let, well, show me. Let, show me the passage. Thirty-seven. Surah thirty-seven. Surah thirty-seven. Uh, verse thirty-five. For they, when they were told that there is no God except Allah, would puff themselves up with pride. Is that the Shahada? Yeah. Um, Where's the Shahada? Uh, la, la ilaha illallah. No, that's not the Shahada though, is it? The Shahada is Ashadu. Yeah. La ilaha illallah. And the rest of it is? Uh, and if you want... No, uh, sorry, hold on one second. Hold on one second. That is not the Shahada. If you're looking for those words, la ilaha illallah, no, no, no. then it's there. The, the Shahada, the, what, I, what I'm asking you for is to show me where Allah commands you to say a statement that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Uh, so, so like in Surah Baqarah, I had the... That was the verse I had in mind. Um, wait, 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 because this one definitely doesn't do what I've asked you to show me. So which Surah Bakr, is that number two? Uh, yes, yeah, second chapter. Getting good at this. Remembering the Arabic names uh -huh. and the numbers. What's the, uh, what's the ayah? Oh, I'm so cold. Yes, <laughs> it Yeah, I know it's not there. I know it's not there. Okay, Surah 4 verse 136. Surah 4 verse 136. Let me pull it up. Surah 4, 136. You'll have to forgive me now that my fingers are freezing. Do you want me to? No, no, no. It's okay. 136, yeah? Surah 4, 136. O ye who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger, and the scripture which he hath sent to his messenger, and the scripture which he sent to those before him, and who, and who denieth him, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the day of judgment hath gone far 
for a strike. Yeah, right. so that's a commandment to the believers to believe. Yes. In Allah and His Messenger. Yes, yeah. but that would mean, if, by your logic, if we're going to use this verse to justify the Shahada in its current form, then I would say that we could come up with a better Shahada because the Shahada should be something along the lines of I believe there's no God but Allah, I believe Muhammad is his messenger, I believe that the Quran is his scripture, that the Torah and the Injil were scriptures before that, I believe in the day of resurrection, the day of judgment, I believe in his angels and I believe in his will over our lives. That would be a better shahada so to believe in, uh, according to this passage. To believe in Muhammad as his messenger implies all of those things. But to believe in Allah is to, to, be be the to believe in Allah is to believe in Muhammad. Exactly. Exactly. So you don't even need the second part of the, the Shahada. Well, well, By your logic. But, but Allah is the name of God in Islam. One of. So it ultimately implies that the person believes in, in, uh, in Muhammad. Right. So that, that, so, so that must, but that's my point. Because you're trying to say that if you say you believe in Allah, it implies that you believe in the resurrection, the day of judgment, the books. Right. But by that same token of logic, and also the it's, but, 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 but by that, by that yeah. same token of logic, yeah. by that same token of logic, you can also just stop at I believe in Allah, because that would imply you believe in Muhammad. Yeah. Right. But the Shahada is not in that form. That. There's no, there's, there, there, there's no there's form the of the Shahada in that way. That, but the Muslim like criticism is that the trinity does contradict the bible like you have something like we're not, this we're not changing the, the subject nazam we're talking about we're talking we're not changing uh, the subject it's the subject because no no you're trying to Muslims get off the subject ask, you're trying you to get know, off the subject where does in the bible you say that i am god uh, so i showed you a verse where um which uh, teaches uh, to believe in god and his uh, messenger yeah but can do you have something like that in the bible yeah, yeah of course thomas thomas literally says to jesus my Lord and my God. So where's the mention of the Holy Spirit in that verse? Well, you, you, the, 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 the certain set of words to validate my belief in the Trinity. Wait a second. And yet you're using exactly the kind of um, defense that I use to demonstrate the Trinity. In other words, what you're doing... One second. Words. No, Nazam, Nazam. In, stop in interrupting. Stop interrupting, Sorry. Nazam. You're a nice guy. Don't interrupt. You're trying to justify the Shahada by quoting one passage over here and one passage over there and bringing the two together to justify the Shahada. And that's fine. But when a Christian does that about the Trinity, you reject it. Because when a Christian comes to the concept of the Trinity, it's because we take everything that the scripture says about God, we hold it in tension and we see what emerges. And what emerges is the Trinity. But when we do it, you demand exact words. But when we demand exact words of you, what you'd say is, I'm allowed to quote one verse from over here and one verse from over here and stitch the two together. But I'm not quoting one verse from there or here, but this I'm verse, showing you a verse which mentions Allah it, and the This verse does not say, yeah, but what, here's what this verse doesn't say. Yeah. This verse does not say, that to become a Muslim, you have to say a shahada. It does say, it, or you who believe, it doesn't. believe. It, do, it says, it says, you who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger and the scripture which he hath sent to his messenger and the scripture which he sent to those before. So you're clipping the verse. Yes, you are clipping the verse because you want to stop verse. at believing Allah and his messenger. But, but the, the verse that you're using to justify that gives other things that should be in a Quranic Shahada. The verse of Thomas doesn't mention the Father in the same verse, nor does it mention the Holy Spirit. You have to go to other places in order to get mention of the Father and the Holy Spirit. But yeah. you don't have a single verse that mentions the, uh, the word God with all reference to all three at the same time. The, the, but the, and, and that's the point. Is now you're, you're, What you're doing here is you're asking me to accept a defense that you won't allow me to employ. And this is my problem with Islamic polemics. No, you are, you words. are, because you're, what you're saying is, show me a single verse that, that refers yeah. to Father, Son, and, 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 yeah, and, and exactly, so you're demanding a specific phrase. In those words. You are, you're saying, show me a verse that it says be, God and then talks about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would, would, you, would, you, would, you accept, would you accept the Father is God? Yes, right. I already do. They yeah. say to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, and that means that if you're baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, this is an act of worship, and it is done in the name well, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, who's the Son? Well, in the Bible, uh, people are baptized in Moses' name. Who, who, no, obviously, it, it, you're, you're, obviously you're, you're simply obfuscating off the point. 
the Father is God. Who, according to the Bible, is the Son? In, that, in the Gospel of Matthew, who is the Son? The peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, you see, th this, this, is this, this Nazam is, is, is you just doing sophism. Jesus is the you're, you're just doing sophism. This is just sophism. I, 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 I would have thought, thought you'd be more academic than this. Anyone who is a serious student of the Gospel of Matthew knows that the Son is identifying Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ... Again, you're, sophism. You're simply being a deliberate, I think, and I'm accusing you of deliberate misrepresenting because any genuine student of Matthew understands that Matthew is identifying the Son of God as Jesus Christ but, but not all it literally time. it literally states that now now the thing is you're demanding of when, when I take your logic and you've kind of just proven my point for me because you've tried to do exactly what I'm doing but when I'm doing it to the Quran you don't accept it this verse here this verse here does not give you a Shahada it does not command you to say a shahada. It says believe. I'm happy to accept that, but that's different from giving shahada. Shahada is testimony, not belief. Those phrase or words, but oh, is that I'm wrong? Not, but I'm not asking you for those specific you, words. You literally did on camera. You said, show me where it says God and then refers to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is exactly what you Just did. Wherever the title that, God is used for all three members. Exactly. So, so you're demanding. Exactly. So you're demanding of me. You're demanding of me something you can't do yourself. It's, it's you not, can't do it. You're asking so, for specific words. I, I, yeah, I am asking for you to show me where Allah commands you to give a shahada in a certain formula. And all you've done is show me a verse where Allah commands you to believe. I'm not disputing whether you should believe. I'm disputing whether Allah has commanded you to give testimony. I've shown the verse where, where the Quran speaks about God being God and Muhammad yes. being the messenger of God. Yes, uh, but, but still not a shahada. <laughs> but but, but um, you're still supposed to believe in Allah and his messenger. The shahada doesn't contradict. No, a sh no, 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 but, but you're, you're obfuscating, you're, you're changing the criticism. The anyway, criticism so is we're that... We're going around in circles. Do you want to stop? Uh, we can continue, but... Uh, at the moment, we're just going around in so, circles. So let's move it on but, to... Uh, I don't mind if you want to have the final word. Okay, so, so let's move it on to a different example. The, the wars of apostasy, what were they fought about? Um, those are mislabeled as wars of apostasy because they weren't about um, not believing in Allah and his, and his messenger. Yeah. But um, those specific Muslims refused to pay Zaka to Abu Bangla yeah. because they wouldn't accept the... Uh, it wasn't that they uh, didn't believe in Allah or the Prophet, but they would only pay the zakat to Muhammad. the Prophet. Muhammad yeah, because, because in their understanding of Islam, mm -hmm. Zakat was something that you gave to Muhammad. Yeah. It wasn't something that you gave to his successors. Which means that in the first generation of Muslims, they did not have this unified understanding that zakat was an obligatory, uh, obligatory continued command uh, of Islam. The very first Muslims, the very first generation of Muslims. The only first Muslims, there were other Muslims and the predominantly, the yes. majority viewed that zakat is something that's continued yeah. uh, annually and not just for the time of the Prophet. So my point to you is show me now in the Quran where Allah says that zakat is a perpetual command for you. Uh, so the Quran is a universal message that's meant for now at all times. But some parts so are abrogated. What do, so there's no verse that abrogates the zakat verse. There, there's, there's no verse in the Quran to my knowledge um, that... Because in, in Islam you have this principle of abrogation that Sometimes the words of the command are abrogated, but not the injunction. So, for instance, stoning of adulterers. Yeah, there's no. It isn't in the Quran, but Muslims still practice it, don't they? But that's based upon what was in the Torah or in the Old Testament. But but that that's irrelevant. It's what the Quran says. So, did Muhammad stone anyone? No. So the Quran doesn't command you to stone people. The Muhammad never stoned anyone. And yet, Muslim schools of law, and I think, it is it Hanbali, the Hanafi school? So, so not they all talk about. So no, not all, but, but am I right in saying that some. Hanafi, is it the Hanafi school, Hanbali school? Talk about you can still stone people? 
possibly. I may be wrong, it'll be one of the schools, but am I wrong in stating that some of the, some schools of Islamic jurisprudence, am I right or wrong? You're right. I'm right. So here we've got an Islamic practice of stoning people that is upheld by some Muslims that the Quran doesn't command, Muhammad didn't do, and yet Muslims are doing it. Now, so accept Muslims that accept some countries to the Quran. Right, so, but this is one of the major schools of Islamic jurisprudence. What, stoning? The, one of the four major schools of Islamic jurisprudence say that you can still stone someone. It's not the only like school of jurisprudence. There were like many others. How um, how is it's it? It's not gone? from the first generation or the early generation. Of Muslims. Would would you agree so, that so Abu Hanifa he was from like the second or third generation? Yeah, Muslims, yeah. And he was of the view that stoning um, is not implied. Um, he took for example the chapter, uh, the fifth chapter of the yeah. Quran, uh, yeah. verse number thirty-two, yeah. where he only mentions in the case of homicide, or murder, and corruption on the land. Could you prohibit? Or Could you just Google for me um, which schools of Islamic jurisprudence still say that you can stone people? Just so we can identify. No, I'm not that. Okay, we're not, we're not denying it, but I think it's informative. So, so my point is that you've got, you, you, I'm sure you would agree that a matter of life and death is a very serious thing. I agree, yeah. And it falls into the category of haram and halal. And there's no verse in the Quran that says it, yeah. and there's no mutawatta hadith that says exactly. it as well. Exactly. But yet, on something so fundamental, major schools of Islamic jurisprudence are contradicting one another. Um, yeah, on a matter of life, and I said this is... A matter of life and death? Yeah. I and mean, for the person getting upon, stoned, this is a pretty important thing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's biblical, um, and uh, their argument is based upon um, also um, the Bible, uh, the book of Leviticus. Yeah, but, but this is irrelevant to our conversation, because our conversation is that you're trying to say that you're it's, following... It's relevant because the, 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 that's the type of argument that they're using yeah. because it's based upon the previous... Right, fine. But the, the, the reality is that you're, you're trying to argue that you're following Islam that goes back to Muhammad. I'm trying to argue that Muslims have been practicing Bidda. And here we've got another example of Bidda. As well as the Shahada, as well as the fact that Muslims can't agree about how you do your prayers, whether you combine two of the five or not. Not all bidders are bad, yeah. so the shahad is obviously not a bad bidder because it doesn't okay. contradict the Quran. But we accept that, are, are we accepting... The does seem to contradict the Quran. Are we accepting that shahada is bidder? Uh, in those words, or like, if you want those words like, I bear witness, I yeah. testify, then yeah, you wouldn't find it in the Quran. Yeah, so it is bidder. But it's strongly implied. Okay, so uh, have, we, have we found the law schools? So, so my point to you is, if, if the Quran states that on this day I have perfected your religion for you, but then what we're finding is that later Muslims are having to improve upon um, Islam by, for instance, either, either, either categorizing stoning as halal or haram, because Islam doesn't decide for us whether um, stoning is halal or haram. The if it, Quran already mentioned that, like in the twenty-fourth chapter of the Quran. So you're saying, but um, it says it what? Doesn't mention stoning, but it mentions like lashing. 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 Yeah, lashing. Um, but lashing is very different from stoning. I agree. Uh, and so, some scholars of the view that this abrogates the previous re uh, religion. About yeah. The stoning. Um, I personally don't believe stoning was even part of the mosaic law anyway. Yeah. Um, my, my, my view is that this was like a corruption. Of even the mosaic law, uh, but um, yeah, so the Quran says something different to what other people believe. Yeah, but it also contradicts the hadiths because the hadiths talk about stoning. Yes, yeah, so those hadiths are not mutawatta, but they are sahih. Um, they are like uh, single narration or isolated reports, but they've not been transmitted by the generation of Muslims. Are you saying they're not sahih? Um, 
they're not um, they, they say maybe in terms of the chain but not in terms of the, the text itself if you take them as say then it would just mean that they refer to the previous religion and not no uh, so so Quran those those hadiths that I'm talking about those hadiths that I'm talking about are found in um, I think they I think it's Sahyal Bukhari's collection Possibly, yeah. and what it says is that in Allah's book it used to it, these, let me finish let me finish that these, it used to be known amongst us and used to be considered as one of the sayings of Muhammad as, as part of the Quran that we should stone people but then what it goes on to say is that these passages were lost and then it says that I am concerned that because these passages can no longer be found in the Quran that that means that later generations will stop doing something that Muhammad used to prescribe and this is a Sahih Hadith found in Sahih al-Bukhari. I, I don't know if it says the word Quran, I'll pull it if but if it says the book of Allah, then that could be understood to refer to the Torah or the Mosaic law and not necessarily the Quran, since the Mosaic law is also a book of Allah. And those Muslims that would take that as being authentic, um, they would interpret that um, in reference. How do they interpret? I think that they, they say that, um, that it was either abrogated with the verse in the Quran in chapter 24, or they will say the practice is still continued, but it's no longer recited or something. So, so but hey. I personally, because I don't take that because uh, those narrations are isolated reports, and as you said, it's a matter of someone's life and death. Yeah. And for for a matter of life and death, you need certainty, not probability. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, with a isolated report, you can never get certainty. Can I, can I, can, can I just respond to that? Because it, it, it strikes me that there is an ad hocness around the way that Muslims treat the Torah. Because when I, when I point out that the Bible contradicts the Quran, that the Bible contradicts Islam, like for instance eating camel meat, or for instance the deity of Christ, or for instance belief in the Trinity, Muslims always say that the Quran overrides the Bible, that where the, the two contradict one another, the Quran is champion, that it, that it is the guardian over the other scriptures. And it, it's very ad hoc, because if you're in the next breath, in your, if in your next breath, the Quran is giving a punishment for lashing, but then some Muslims are trying to use the Old Testament to justify stoning, they're upholding the Torah as and when it suits them, which is what we find Muslims doing all the time. They, they uphold this verse and not that verse purely on an ad hoc basis. Well, then using what um, scholars refer to as Israeli art type traditions, yep. uh, stories or narrations that come from Jewish Christian communities. Um, so they're ignoring the Quran and they're uh, favoring these particular types of narrations, yep. which may have entered into Islam through Jewish and Christian uh, converts to Islam. Yep. Um, they, they brought with them these types of narrations. Uh, which made their way into Islamic Jewish context. Right, and, 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 and for me, it, you know what it, what it, what it tells me? It, it, it tells me that, that Islam, Islam is bidder built on bidder. That you've got around 200 years after Muhammad was born, you have the, the, the sort of seed of what becomes classical Islam. You know, and, and that actually, the, the religion that Muhammad's first followers had, if there even was a Muhammad as described in the Hadiths, that, 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 that Islam was very different from what Islam came to be. Because there's a series of developments in terms of um, theology, in terms of the law schools, in terms of jurisprudence, bearing in mind that before the argument was won about um, the use of hadiths in, in creating fiqh and jurisprudence, um, Muslim judges were simply using the local customs and tradition and their own sort of reason and analogies. So you mean like Ahlul Rai and Ahlul 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so th there's the living tradition of the Prophet. Yep. Um, and then there's um, the, the written tradition. So the, uh, what is known as, what's referred to as the Sunnah of the Prophet, uh, which is the, uh, you know, the, the practice and the approval of the Prophet. Um, it was transmitted either through the living tradition uh, of the Muslim community or through a, a text-based written system. Yep. However, some scholars such as um, Abu Hanifa and uh, Imam Malik, um, they gave preference over the living tradition, um, the, what they say are the Amal of people rather than the isolated or written text because the collective practice of people that also forms a, a form of knowledge um, because they obviously practiced it from their predecessors and their predecessors yep. obviously got it from somewhere yep. that has a more weightier evidence than an isolated report which someone's transmitting but nobody else seems to transmit it or report it. So if, they feel, if that contradicted the practice of the people, yeah. then they would reject the isolated report and go follow what the people were collectively practicing and be more authentic. But this is the, this is the point, that the living tradition is in disrepute. Muslims can't agree upon the living tradition. Shia, they combine two prayers into one. The living tradition is the five well, prayers, one second. but the specific uh, one details second. are But even, even, the, even the way that Muslims pray is in dispute. They, they, the, they have the, different the, the ways details, of praying. So, the, the so, 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 so the reality is you've got versions of Islamic prayer. So there's the sajda. Yeah. Um, both Sunni but let, let, me sajda let, me to, let me to finish my point because what what if if what we've got are and there's some if, no, no, difference no, of no, 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 let, let me let me finish my point nazan because if what we've got are examples of corruption to the living tradition and we've got examples of corruption to the hadiths and we've got examples of muslims doing bidda like creating and fashioning the shahada then 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 that means whether you see that as good or bad that means that what we've got are later developments to something that was meant to be perfectly revealed at the time of Muhammad. And the thing is, if something's perfect, it doesn't need to be added to or revised or changed. Now, Christianity does not have this problem. Christianity doesn't have this problem because inherent within our worldview is this idea of continued guidance, of continued revelation of through the Holy Spirit, this other advocate who will guide us into all truth. And the, the reality is that you don't have that justification for Bidda in Islam. There's not contradictory in terms of the living tradition, uh, but it, you can have like valid difference of opinion amongst Muslims over like non-essential items of, of, of belief or of practice. Are you, are, you saying, are you saying that, that Allah taught multiple different ways to pray? So in the tradition, the Prophet Muhammad is shown to pray in multiple different ways. Okay. Uh, so some scholars take it as either abrogation. Yeah. Or uh, some scholars uh, take it as uh, uh, that the Prophet, in different stages of his life, uh, perform the prayer differently. So it's to do with like which one you consider to be more heavier uh, on the skills as be more historical. Right, but, but, but that, the that, basic is to pray. But that the, but the specific details of how you pray. But that. Um, but that, but that, but what you've done there is, is you've admitted the point that I'm making, which is that there are corruptions to you the. Ha there, there, well, clearly, if you're saying that we've got one hadith that says this way and another hadith that says that way, and then Muslims are disputing about which hadiths to trust to form the way they so pray. So they're not denying that the Prophet prayed in those two different ways, but some would say that one abrogates the other. That's all. One, one abrogates the other. Yeah, so, so they don't deny that the Prophet prayed in this particular way. But then in later on, they would say it was abrogated by this practice. Yeah. So you can also have hadiths abrogating other hadiths as well. Okay, and who but is it's it? Not denying and who is it de that decides which hadiths abrogate which hadiths? So, um, like academics. Uh, scholars? Yeah. Right, and, and this, is, this for me is bitter because can you show me where. Muhammad says, firstly, show me where Muhammad says that you can use a, a, another set of literature a pot to interpret the Quran. Show me where at Muhammad, the, the, the Quran justifies another set of literature 
to interpret the Quran. Can you show me that? So in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, um, whenever there was a feud among Muslims, they yep. would go to the Prophet. Yes. But then after the Prophet Muhammad, yep. um, when there was the dispute, um, they would um, then refer to the companions or the disciples. Yep. And then after them, um, you would have the students. Um, yep. And then you would then uh, the development of Islam is that you have different legal schools being set up and founded. Yep. And out of those legal schools, you have like students and teachers coming out of that. Right. Um, and they would write books um, as well as have students. Yep. Um, so so like this um, nowadays, um, we would do like historical kind of research. Yep. And look at the kind of the principles of reason. Um, as to how like a particular scholar came to that particular conclusion. Right. But when it comes to like um, Jewish pundits, then there's valid difference of opinion in Islam. So what? What? But that that admit and again. You're not expected to blindly follow. Like if you find the evidence contradicts like, yep. what you've been taught, then you, you're then you don't have to follow that. But you follow like what convinces you in terms of the uh, the evidence. Yeah. But in terms of like matters of salvation, then this is everyone agrees like with the shahada. So no one says the shahada is a bad innovation. Right. Bad bidah. So so so. But but what again? What you've demonstrated? But what you've got? What you've demonstrated there again is that the perfect religion that was revealed at the time of Muhammad needed improvement later, because what you've got is you've got Muslims later deciding this is how we pray. You've got Muslims later deciding this is how we say the shahadi. You've got Muslims later deciding um, you know this is how we understand the zakat, and yet we can't see any justification. For, for that innovation in the Quran. That not only not only does that not the only shahada, there's no justification in the Quran. There's no the, the the kind of oh my gosh, it's Leon. Leon! Bro! I'm so sorry, Nazam. I'll come and talk to you in a second, bro. I'll come and talk to you in a second. So 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 we conclude because I have to go and do my prayers. Sure, of course. So my, my, my reality, the, 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 the point that I'm making to you is that, a, a couple of points. Number one, as you have actually done in this conversation, you demand of Christians something you can't do yourself. You demand of us certain kinds of words in certain connections, in certain ways, that when we reverse that logic on you, you can't demonstrate from the Quran. Number two, Islam is bidder. The Islam that you practice today is not the Islam that was revealed by Muhammad. It was invented by Muslims later on. Now, you can justify that by saying that not all bidder is bad. Fine, I mean, you know, you can do that. But, that, but, but the reality is, much of what you understand to be Islam, Muhammad never mentioned, Muhammad never practiced. There's no, and, and so what you've got in the heart of Islam is that it is bidder, it is something that is created by later generations, which means that it wasn't perfected at the time of Muhammad. And this means that if, if the Quran is making a statement about Islam, that it is a perfected religion on this day, and, it is, and, and yet we're finding that Muslims are having to improve perfection, you've got a, a, an issue there that I think should make you ask questions about whether you believe Islam to be true or not. Alright, so my, my conclusion is I feel you're touching at straws and if you want to make arguments against Islam you need to come with better arguments than show me shahada in the Quran. Yeah, yeah well I mean the thing is, the thing is if you're, if you're condemning my line of logic when I, when I do that to the Quran, you're condemning all of those Muslims that come up to Christians and say show me a verse where it says God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Because what you've just done there, and I totally agree with you, is you've just condemned all of the Muslims that use that logic. Because you're saying that that's a weak argument, right? But when I apply that weak argument to you, we find that your own book can't even pass your weak argument against Christianity. Okay, so I can let people decide. So. Yeah, the people okay. can decide. Uh, thank you. Anyway, Nazam, yeah, can I give you a gift? Nice I always give people a gift oh, okay. to uh, have a nice conversation, and, and that was a nice conversation. So, please let me give you a gift. Here you go, my friend. Book on theology for you. Oh, thank you. Have a good day. Well, for that. I appreciate it. You know, if you've got any questions, come back it. with it and we'll, uh, we'll have a talk. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Take care. The Forgotten Father. So, guys, in, in closing, 
what, what we've demonstrated here is that, that, that Muslims come to Christians, and Nazam actually did this in that debate, and demand of Christians a certain set of words. Show me the set of words in the Bible. Show me where God is described as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I want to hear with those words. But when I take their logic, their, their polemic, and I reflip it around on them, and I say, show me where the Quran says, give the Shahada in this form, we find that Muslims can't even pass their own logic. And, and, and Nazam described that as a weak argument. So why is it when I do it to Islam, it's a weak argument, but when Muslims do it to Christians, they think it's some knockdown punch. Why do you think that is though? I think they do it because the, the, the da'i in this corner don't care about consistency. They don't care about truth. They just care about winning. Yeah. That's all they want to do. They want to win the argument. And they don't care whether their argumentation is consistent or not. Yeah. And the reality is amongst Christians, we don't teach apologetics well enough that many Christians are equipped to respond to that flawed logic. And that's why we need to start teaching apologetics in all of our fellowships. 100%. Now, furthermore, what we also saw is that there's evidence of bidda inside Islam. Now, bidda... What is bidda? Bidda is innovation. And bidda is described classically within Islam as one of the greatest sins that you can do after shirk. Shirk is uh, making partners with Allah or giving Allah's attributes to a created thing. So the, 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 the bidda that we saw is that the hadiths were created later. And the, the living tradition itself, like the shahada, like the five prayers, like the understanding of zakat. These are like core Islamic attitudes and beliefs, core Islam. And it was invented later. It was settled later. And Muslims can't even agree upon it. Ask you a question. So what type of Islam was Muhammad practicing? Well, this is the point. And actually, it's a shame we never really got onto that with Nazab. Because the reality is, when you, when you take away all the layers of a, a accretion and crust, when you strip it all away, what we seem to find in evidence is that Muhammad was a warlord. Muhammad was a law, warlord that probably did claim some kind of sanction from God. Maybe he saw himself as an Abrahamic style prophet to the God of Abraham. But Muslims later understanding of Islam developed out of that proto-Islam. But proto-Islam look nothing like Islam to, or the, the, the Muslims classically practice. There were no hadiths, there were no law schools, there was no development of their theology. Their, their, their very five pillars themselves in the earliest Muslims weren't all there. <laughs>